r slash ask reddit. Far program 5655 says. What was the wildest event that went down at your workplace? Hikarobk says. We were on a work retreat in rural Colorado. We were going to spend the day horseback touring as a team building exercise for management. Arcia had a connection to the ranch owner and was the only experienced rider in the group. He mounted after the rest of us and, as he did, the horse bolted. He fell off with one foot stuck in the stirrup. The horse reared up and toppled like it was going to fall on him, but the stabler master got himself between seer and horse and kept it from being worse. Horse came down hoof first onto side of seer's head, snapping his jaw and taking his ear off. So seer is laying open wound down in the dirt, hay and horse shit. Ambulance called and rushed him off to veil for emergency surgery. We all went home late that night to the east coast. Sia couldn't fly for a few weeks, but ultimately was fine. Best impromptu team building event ever. It's Gitamakas and says. Trauma bonding is a type of team building I suppose. CRD90F says. I was a probation officer in Ohio. Remember Judge Sikonetti, the judge who often would offer offenders unusual sentences which they would agree to instead of jail time. Yes, that's legal and actually pretty common, there's little restriction on conditions of probation. Could they appeal some of the sentences for cruel slash unusual, and get them overturned, if they wanted to? Sure, but then they'd go to jail like normal, so they chose not to, just to head off all the cruel slash unusual comments. The probation officers were the ones responsible for enforcing his unusual sentences, which was always interesting. The only one I personally had to help with was one that was all over the news, the woman who neglected her dog, and was sentenced to spend 8 hours sitting in garbage at the landfill, in the stinkiest, smelliest, most god awful odor place they can find, to reflect on how her dog must have felt. If you puke, you puke. I remember how the sanitation workers didn't believe us, when we said we need you to show us where the nastiest part of the dump is, judges orders, until we showed them the paperwork. Tish says. I remember this being posted all over animal rights and pet owner groups etc. Everyone cheered the judge, and said how fitting of a punishment it is, and how we need to make, that the consequence for animal neglect nationwide. I was surprised, I thought 8 hours of that is surely a super easy punishment compared to jail. Would it really be a deterrent? Why would animal rights groups so unanimously support it? It can't be that bad can it? Then again I've never been to a dump so maybe I'm underestimating it lol. Mike7676 says. When I was little I used to go to the city dump and help my dad clean out worksite trash from the back of a company truck. Certain areas of a dump hardly smell. Wood trash, plastic, it was the 80s, and metal of course barely smell. Rotting food gets funky, but less than you'd think. We lived in a very rural area so what did stink? Rotting and festering meat. Meat such as deer carcasses, shot, poached or otherwise, pets that died, and thrown out meats that had gone bad. A truly vile smell. I helped my dad, right until I got in the way of a shovel full of metal trash, dad welded and did long haul trucking, and wound up with stitches in my scalp from said shovel full of metal. Mean security says. Corporate office. I had given my employee a poor annual review, because she was a bad employee. Things came to a head a few weeks later. She sent a scathing ML to my boss's boss, we'll call him B. She printed this ML out, and tacked it up outside her cubicle. My buddy and another VP called her out on this, and asked her to take it down. She also printed out quotes from the art of war, and tacked those up in her cubicle that week. I was in my cubicle about 3 cubicles away, and voices were getting louder. But I was working with 2 others, trying to troubleshoot weird numbers we were seeing. And then I got a nosebleed. At this point R is yelling at the woman in the cubicle next to her, and saying really nasty things. So my buddy and the VP get ours involved, and R is sent home. 
a gets put on paid leave for two months. When she wants to come back, we discuss performance expectations with ours and my boss, as well as modified responsibilities. It does not meet the expectations we lay out. She lasts about a month, and then there is another. Dust up in which she is rude and inappropriate to a coworker. I forget the details of that day. She is sent two hours. We cannot rely on building security at this point, because I has befriended the regular guard. She refuses to be sent home. I call my boss who calls her boss B. B proceeds to drive out to our office from his C-suite about 20 minutes away. B takes her into an empty office for about a half hour and eventually she gets walked out. We never see her again. The next day the head of our company's security drives out to our office to warn me that her is unstable and to make sure I watch myself. I go buy pepper spray and a home security system that day. I've never been quite the same since that day in 2016. That is also the day they started paying for an armed security guard in our building. About three days later, two uniformed police officers are wandering around our office. I'm completely baffled there's no way that random people should be wandering around our office, even if they are cops. But I imagine it's related to her, and I live in the same town. I work in, so I go talk to the cops. They ask where room 313 is, and I show them that rooms aren't numbered like that in our building. They ask if I know where her is being held, and I say none of us have seen her in three days. They say they got a report that her was being held against her will in room 313. We really didn't have anything to offer to the cops, except that maybe someone in ours downstairs knows something. The cops leave. About a week later, someone noticed weird expenses charged to his department. When we looked at the invoices, they had a different address than the normal one used for that company. And when we googled the new address, it was a small sketchy trucking outfit, not a global company. So we called B. Turns out that during that month they let her come back to work, she was trying to steal millions of dollars. She wasn't at her own desk, because she was in accounts payable, committing fraud. I was sentenced to a few years in prison. I imagine she's out by now. All because I gave her an accurate performance review that she did. Fit possible 9552 says. So when does this come out on Lifetime? Would make a pretty entertaining movie. R slash ask reddit. Roadrunner 10 says. What is a secret that you would never share with people you know personally, but would share with a stranger? Hugo Zackenbush 2 says. I feel slightly embarrassed saying this on here, but I was once attacked by a whole bunch of street mimes, and they did some unspeakable things to me. Imnotary Social says. I don't know how to do long division. Redmooncut15 says. Same because I was never taught. My school district redistricted, and I had to switch elementary schools going into 4th grade. At my old school they taught it in 4th grade, my new one they taught it in 3rd. And then I just, never, learned it. Lovabilitas says. My depression is much worse than I've ever let on, and has been a major part of my life, since I was 11 to 12. Outside of a few very close friends no one even knows I have depression or CPTSD. I'm extremely high functioning, and spent decades hiding it from everyone. Even my husband only realized recently, married 8 years, how bad it is, partly because I didn't want to upset him, partly because I've spent so long with it, that I genuinely don't know what's normal and what isn't. Some of my family slash friends are aware that I struggle, but not the extent of it. I have been working with a therapist for a few years now, and am really trying to overcome this secret, and be more open and honest. It's hard. I have a warped sense of what is and isn't a symptom, what's important and what isn't. I have spent most of my life putting everyone else before myself to the extent that I have a hard time figuring out when what my own wants and needs are. Positive Self 84 says. That I have an on Liffenzel Mayo. 
Burnt Loaf Good says. I've always quietly wished I was born a man, since I was a little girl. As a teen I'd sometimes daydream what I'd look like as a man, and what my life would be like. Covertos 808 says. Someone thinks I've done sexually with a person of the same sex. Medical Fan 7943 says. That I'm hungry, and can't afford to go down to the convenience store down the street, and get a frozen pizza or microwave burger, ugh. Not to mention my heart and psych medications, but... Food is hash one tonight. Home and Pleiades says. I've got 10 bucks in Venmo, that I can totally send you right now, if it would help any. I know it's not a ton but it's yours. PM me. Prairie Papa says. I super secretly know, that the top posts from this will be in a TikTok slider show within a day or two. I see material 3900 says. I'm an atheist. Most of my friends are Christians, and probably assume I'm too. I finally had to come out, and tell my super religious cousin, because he kept questioning me about my beliefs. He still tries his best to convince me I'm wrong. It is beyond irritating. Bitter Herbs says. That guy at work, that I have a past with. The one everyone hates, but I will never tell anyone, why our past is tumultuous. When we were 19, I got pregnant by him, and I terminated the pregnancy at around 18 weeks. In my defense, I wasn't aware how far along I was, until it was too late. I do not regret that decision though. He was also a manipulative, conniving, horrible person. We made a sex tape together, and he ended up trying to use it against me through blackmail. I wasn't aware of how evil of a person he was at the time, because I was insecure, and he was a great gaslighter. He is still a piece of shit 20 plus years later. Even if he told anyone we know mutually what happened, they wouldn't believe him, because 90% of what he ever says is a lie. Amada Thib says. My boyfriend and I left our rental, and moved into a caravan. Had to stay at a caravan park for the convenience of showers and water. Only one we could find close to our area, was a nudist park. We decided to stay, closed though the majority of people we saw there were naked. First few days were good, we got a good site with plenty of room and privacy, not too far from the amenities only thing I didn't like, where the shower stalls had no doors on them. But that was never an issue, I was always alone in the block. My boyfriend started drinking with one of the guys, that was camping solo there. By dusk, boyfriend was visiting me in the van, telling me the guy want to meet me. I didn't feel like it, but wanted to be polite. Walked out to their fire, and met Tom who was this nice tall guy, very charming. Great big cock. So we are talking, and the subject gets a bit sexual. Tom wants me to get naked, boyfriend wants me to suck Tom's dick. He also wants us to go. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.